Hello, Sofa Squad. It's me, Paul, with reporting live from my sofa. I hope y'all are doing well out there. Y'all, today, I couldn't keep my mouth shut any longer about these cases, y'all. I had to say something about them. Now, today, we are going to be talking about Lori Vallow, Gannon Stogg, and Evelyn Boswell. So, if you want to learn more about these cases, what in the hey diddle diddles of the damn cat and the fiddle is going on out there in the world that's making this crazy stuff happen, then keep listening. Y'all, first we're going to be talking about the Vallow Daybell case. I, I don't even know where to start with this, y'all. And so, I'll start here with this. I have been following my friend Denise Rainey. Now, I'm going to drop her uh, links down in the description below. I've been following her for this case, y'all. She is in it to win it on this. She has put up tons of content. And she is like, if you look deep dive up, her picture is next to it. So, definitely check her out if you want to do like a deep dive. Because here's the thing. I was like, you know what? I have to say something about this case. But I haven't done like a deep dive on it over here. I've been like involved in other projects and work and all that kind of stuff. But every time I look at the case, I'm like, what? Huh? How are these people alive? Why are these people these people? And so, I honestly was just like, I don't know where to start, y'all. But we're going to start somewhere. And we're going to start with Lori Vallow. Now, let's just go over a few little things about her. Now, Lori Vallow seems to be a whole bunch of different things. But one, thing's that, one of the things she doesn't seem to be is a decent parent and decent human being. I think we can all safely say that. Okay, so she was arrested February 20th, finally, oh my god. And all the stuff that went behind that and continuing is just blows my mind. So let's go over some of the facts about her. So she's hit with two felony counts of desertion and non-support of dependent children, resisting or obstructing officers, criminal solicitation to commit a crime, contempt of court. She is being held on $5 million bond. Now she did go to get a lawyer. She got a lawyer. She went to court and they were of course like, please reduce the bond. And the judge is like, absolutely not. So it stands. So she's behind bars where she needs to be. So at the the center of this case are the victims, the missing children. Tylee Ryan and her younger half-brother, J.J. Vallow, have been missing since September 23rd. Now, their grandparents are the ones who requested that a welfare check be done, and we'll get into that in just a minute. So first, let's talk about who is Lori. Now, she is the biological mother of Colby Ryan and Tylee Ryan. She is the adopted mother of J.J. Vallow and a person of interest in the disappearance of Ty Lee and J.J. Her current location is in jail, Hawaii. Now, she is married to Chad Daybell, husband number five. Now, also that is of interest is that she and Chad got married just two weeks after his wife, Tammy, died of suspicious causes. So, there's that. Let's continue. So let's talk about Chad Daybell here for a minute. Now, Chad has like all these ties and so does Lori to this doomsday prepper group, bizarre kind of stuff. Chad was also a grave digger and he also wrote a book, One Foot in the Grave, about his experiences and interactions with departed spirits. So there's something to think on. Now, he is a publisher and author who has written several books. Now, these are loosely based on like, the theology of the Church of Jesus Christ and Latter-day Saints, but it's also like a large amount of doomsday type stuff. Isn't that always the case with these bizarre situations? Now, remember, his other wife, Tammy, is the one who died of mysterious causes just a couple of weeks before he conveniently married Lori. So, let's talk about Tylee Ryan. She is one of the missing children. Uh, she is the biological daughter of Lori Vallow and Joseph Ryan. We don't know where she's at. She's age 17. She was last seen on September 6th. So let's talk about J.J. Vallow. He is the other victim in this case. He is the adopted son of Charles and Lori Vallow. He's age 7 and he was last seen on September 23rd. So Tylee apparently disappeared first. She had gone on a trip to the Yellowstone National Park. She went with her mom, her little brother, and her uncle. Now, park cameras did show them entering the park, and that was the last time she was ever seen. Now, I'm going to be adding some commentary and stuff and some little opinions that I have. I mean, I have been to this park before. I mean, these parks, if you've been to them or similar ones, they are 
huge. So, you know, this is very concerning to me because so much can happen in these parks. Lots of people go missing. Lots of things happen. And it is a vast amount of, of space for something to take place in, a transaction to take place in. You know, anything could go wrong in these scenarios. Now, later, JJ vanished. Basically, he was last seen at school. Now, he was enrolled in his elementary school. Apparently, Lori told the employees there that she was going to homeschool him. So, essentially, this is like the last time that he was seen there. And again, this is very suspect, obviously. But the grandparents are the ones that like called in the whole welfare check thing. So, they show up to Vallow's apartment. And this is where things get even weirder. So, the detectives spoke with Chad Daybell and Alex Cox. Alex Cox is Lori's brother. And they got a very weird reaction off the whole scenario. I mean, they're like, yeah, they acted like, you know, oh, they don't you know, even know who she is. And it was obvious that shady stuff was going down with the situation. Now, Alex was like, oh, JJ's with his grandma. And the cops are basically like, uh, hello, you know, the grandmother is the one who filed the missing, you know, the welfare check. So let's try again. You know, that's usually a bad sign. When something that divisive is going on, because clearly it is, let's call it spade a spade. It's like, get your lies straight. Now, I'm not trying to help out somebody here or whatever, but this is just another level of the bizarre aspect of this crime where it's just like, are y'all talking to each other? Why? you're facilitating whatever the you know craziness bomb blastedness that you're trying to facilitate and you're not conversing with one another to relay this information but it's almost like they just didn't care so then Valo is basically like oh no he's with a friend in arizona well then they contact the friend they're like uh nope haven't seen him in a long time so there's just this shuffling you know the alleged you know location of these children here, there, wherever, but they're nowhere to be found. When the police turn, return back to Valo's home, it's empty. It's gone. Again, this is another level of if you have missing children, you know, an authentic person that's concerned about their children, number one, it is not facilitating all these lies as to where the children were. Number two, you, know, you don't just pack your stuff up and head out to Hawaii. Now, a storage unit was found. It has, you know, kids' clothing and it toys, all this type of stuff. Again, why is all this stuff there? Why is this stuff packed away like this, forgotten about? It's a very grim sign. Now, investigators went to the apartment. They also found some of JJ's medicine there. It was left behind. Another very grim sign. So things are not looking good in this department. Now, death and destruction seem to follow this couple. The wife of Chad Daybell, Tammy Daybell, she died in her sleep of kind of like suspicious causes. Now, she died in October 2019, not that long ago. Alex Cox, Lori's brother, the one that was seemingly trying to cover up for a little bit, he died in December of 2019 under suspicious circumstances. So here we have two, count them, two suspicious deaths so far, but it gets better. Joseph Ryan, this is Lori's third husband. And the, bi and the biological father of Ty Lee Ryan, he died April 2018. So this is three deaths so far. We also have Charles Vallow. This is Lori's a one, two, three, a fourth husband. He's also dead. Imagine that at this point. He died in July of 2019. Now look, y'all, their marriage, Lori and Charles, it had been crumbling allegedly. Charles had filed for divorce. Now, even in the court documents, he's like, I'm scared of her. I'm afraid she's going to kill me. She has developed doomsday-like crazy beliefs, and girl ain't right. People are claiming Lori's talking about she's a god, you know, this, that, and the other. It sounds like she went down some rabbit hole and never came out. But, I mean, it literally was like a rattlesnake handling, tongue-talking, Jesus driving a spaceship down here to get us, Armageddon. Now, we've been watching this unfold, you know, and the big thing, obviously, was, wait, their kids are missing and they're in Hawaii? You know, wait, their kids are missing and they're being forced to produce them in a week? Wait, their kids are missing and they still haven't produced them? So, I mean, this has been, like, just a, a, a gawk show this whole time. You know, here's the thing, and here's what I want to get at with this. And again, Again, I'm going to I'm gonna drop the link down there below. If you want like a deep dive on this case, I'm going to be following some of the outlandish parts of this case because you just can't look away from it. But if your kids are missing, you're not going to be running away from situations to help find them. If your kids are missing, you're not going to be forced to produce them. You know, all of this stuff is not a good look. Obviously, we hope these children can come back home. 
I mean, if you want my personal opinion of what's going on, I feel like they have been swished around in some cult. That's what I think is taking place. But I also find it very bizarre how much these people have seemingly got away with. You know, you don't have numerous people die around you to this degree in this short amount of time without something shady going on. And now the children are missing, you know, and we sit here and we see them walking around Hawaii like not a care in the world. You know, apparently there was nothing in that apartment down in Hawaii that made it look like kids were visiting. I mean, I think there's a couple of possessions, but I mean, you know, if there's, you know, a third person, kids, whatever, you're going to see signs of it and there's no signs of it. So it's disgusting. And she is in jail and hopefully she will remain there. You know, it's a very huge sign that the grandparents are like, Ugh. you know, yeah, we've got concerns. This is very bad. People don't have nice things to say about these people, especially her. So stay tuned for that. Like I said, check out Denise Rainey's channel if you want some deep dives on that. Now, another case going on right now is Gannon Stalk. Y'all, this case, I'm like, are you kidding me? And this is why I wanted to cover all three of these because each of them, I'm just like, what? What is going on out there? Now, what I want to talk about with Gannon is a few of the, the media aspects that we've seen take place. So Gannon's stepmother, Leticia, we'll call her Tisha or T here on out. You know, allegedly she is the last person to see him alive or in person, whatever you want to say, before he went missing. Now, this was on January 27th, around 3.15. Now, he had left to go to a friend's house nearby. She said she reported him missing when he never returned. Now, she suggested that the boy had been abducted, but the police were like, eh, eh. So, what we've seen going on with this is, first of all, the search is still going on. At the time of this recording, I believe he's been missing for 29 days. Now, we all know this is a bad sign when this takes place. So, we're hoping and hoping and hoping that he will, you know, return home. So, one of the interesting aspects of this case was watching the difference in media response from the stepmother versus his real mother. Now, Tisha did some interviews, and these didn't go over well, to say the least. Now, y'all, I am all for being like, look, let's fit out some information before. I made assumptions before about whatever, so I get that. We need to do that. You know, so yes, everyone is presumed innocent. When it comes to children missing, there are some things that send off red flags with people. So let's just talk about a few. So one interview that she does, we see her on there and the interviewer's talking to her and he asks her a question about the case. And essentially she's like, look, I can't talk about the case, but I can talk about me. And essentially she just goes on this rant that is all wrapped up and look, the police need to take down these Facebook groups. You know, people are coming after me. They're spreading false information. I had to say this for that and did, 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 did. There's this very me, me, me aspect about it. It's very cringy and it's actually very hard to watch. Now, his mother did an interview and she's sitting there holding his sonic toy. All her concern is that she wants her boy back. That's what she wants. You know, she has the toy and when she squeezes it, you hear his voice. I mean, I, I got teared up watching it. I was like, oh my God, I cannot fathom. You had this, okay, so let's say it this way. When I watched that, I got goosebumps now. I emotionally connected on that because I was like, I can't imagine. Oh my God, I felt her pain. And I'm not trying to say I know what that's like, but it translated. When I watched the stepmother stuff, I was angry. I was like, why are we talking about what? Like what? This doesn't make sense. Why aren't we hearing about Gannon? I don't, I understand you can't talk about the details of the case, but let's try to humanize Gannon. Let's just talk about him so that whoever has him can hear his name over and over. You know, how great he was, how this or that or whatever it takes. Not oh my God, people are ripping me apart in social media, that type thing. So it gave me this completely different feeling and honestly, it creeps me out and I really, really hope that I'm wrong. And again, I'm not saying that she is guilty. We don't know this yet. We do not know what has happened. Hopefully we will. And hopefully he comes home and hopefully there is something else going on here. We don't know. I hope that we do not see a scenario of another parent doing something completely shady with their child. Now I'm going to also be dropping some like links that you can contact if you have any kind of tips for any of these cases. Now let's go ahead and talk about the last one, Evelyn Boswell. Y'all, when I looked at this one, we were doing a live chat and someone threw it out to me like, look into this. And I looked it up and that's when I was like, what, what is going on with all these missing children? What is up? And then I started looking at the case and I was like, oh, hell no. I was like, this girl clearly, I'm talking about the mother, has been watching too much Casey Damn Anthony. 
I don't know what to say. It was so similar. And I'm like, history repeats itself, y'all. And at first, I was like, clearly she hasn't seen Casey Anthony. But then I was like, maybe she did and saw that Casey Anthony got off with all that stuff. And so she's copying her. But let's talk about some of the details. So Evelyn was entered in as a missing child on Tuesday, February 12th. But she was last seen in December, like 10th or 12th, not even the 31st. Not that that makes a difference. The beginning of December by a babysitter. Y'all, she's a little baby. She's two feet tall. She weighs 28 pounds. I mean, my God. She's just a tiny little thing. Bless her heart. Now, the sheriff says that Megan Maggie Boswell, the mother who has full custody, has been inaccurate with her information and a little dicey. Maggie, Megan, whatever you want to call her, said that she knew who had her daughter, but she was afraid to report it. I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, because again, I'm sitting here, I'm like, y'all, y'all heard of Casey Anthony up in here? You know, why would you even do such a thing? It, it doesn't even make sense to me. It doesn't even make sense as a lie. Honestly, y'all, I have no idea how Casey Anthony got off with that. Honestly, I don't from start to finish and any of that. It was absurd when we heard it from her and it's absurd now that we're hearing it again. Now, again, the mother says, I left her with somebody while I was at work who I thought I could trust. Now, I'm going to read a direct quote from her so that we can just hear this from the horse's mouth on this one, y'all. Well, I'm going to use an accent. I don't know if she talks this way, but I just feel like I need to. Well, the reason I didn't report it or anything was I knew the person who had her and I didn't want them to run away with her. And as soon as they thought anything was going on, they just kind of vanished. So I'm just kind of worried, you know, about where they are at, what they're doing with her at this point in time. She declined to give any names in that. Now, y'all, that right there, if I was a cop, I'd be like, honey, here's the handcuffs. Walk your ass over to the jail. I'll be there in a minute to book you. I mean, come on. I mean, it doesn't get any worse than this, y'all. Now, she continued on. In a way, I knew that as soon as anything went down, this person was going to disappear. And they have. They won't answer phone calls. They just kind of disappeared. So I'm sitting here like, honey, no. Do you, think we're, do you think we were born yesterday? Do you think the police were born yesterday? Absolutely not. Cancel button on this person. This person has been canceled. Now, two people were arrested in Wilkes County, North Carolina. Y'all, a lot of this stuff is hitting home towards North Carolina. There's another case I'm working on that had some ties down into Pinehurst. Not what you're thinking, but another one. And I'm just like, what is going on? But my father is from Wilkes County, so I'll, I'll. Now, the people that were arrested were none other than the grandparents of the missing child, Angela Boswell, 42, and her boyfriend, William McLeod, 33. So, basically, they were driving a BMW that the cops were essentially like, look, whoever's driving this car, we need to ask them some questions about this missing child. Now, it turns out that Megan was in the process of, like, trying to buy this car for her mother or whatever. Now, a purchase agreement was never completed. You know, no money changed hands. And basically, this car is reported as stolen. So they're each being held on a $2,500 bond. But Angela already has a violation of probation for theft. So she probably won't be going anywhere anytime soon. But clearly, the cops, you know, they want to sit here. They want to, like, sequester them. And they have them where they want them to get some answers. Because, y'all, I mean, we already know, y'all, some, some shady BS is going on with this again. The third case here and there's probably others y'all that i'm not talking about these are the ones that are popping off right now and so i'm able to sit here and just start looking into them and being like what i mean are we kidding each other now before we wrap this up i just want to say again check down the description i'm going to have contact there you know for uh places to contact if you have information about these cases things of this nature it's always best to contact these places directly you know if you have viable information that you're like oh my god i think i have something contact the police directly and give it to them that's the best thing to do so i mean that's kind of it you know i just i don't know what is going on in the world at this point to where people are doing these things with their children and some of them allegedly you know we don't have any convictions on any of these things yet but it's extremely shady looking you know and here's the deal if somebody wants their kid to be found they're going to help with it period end of story you know they're going to help with it they're not going to hinder it they're not going to run off they're not going to say my kid went missing two months ago but i forgot to dial it in you know it just it doesn't work this way you know they're not going to get on tv and talk about what a crappy day they had and oh by the way let's find ganon <laughs> it, it's just not how it works and so there needs to be accountability in these cases but also the cops 
comps need their space to be able to work and get to the point of creating that accountability. So again, if you want to go down a big rabbit hole in the Valor case, check out Denise's channel. It's down below. And that's it. Thanks for hanging out. I hope everybody's doing well. And I will be talking to you all soon.